because being in church today was a, and these church families were out to me and I look forward to Reverend Jones and Deetha. We had so many good members in church. It's amazing. And I love everyone that ever did that thing. And I'm looking forward to enjoying this many days. It's gonna be a good one. Yes, yes. <laughs> amen, amen. All right, is there another testimony? If not, I would like you all to join me in a responsive reading. This is found in the back of your hymn books, number 588. In the back of your hymn books, number 588. I will read the light print and ask you all to read the dark print and then the very last verse we'll all read together. Yes, uh, please, Sam. I'll read this is called Praising the Lord. There's not another book anywhere around. There's not a book for you. Well, here's some people watching my YouTube. There's a book up here. Uh, What's that? Five eighty-eight, praising the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem; he gathers together our cast of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their name. Great is our God and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifted up the mute. He cast the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Who covered the heaven with clouds? Who prepares rain for the earth? Who maketh grass to grow upon the mountain? He giveth to the beast his food and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the maid of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thou God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in the borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hostile like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth this wind to blow and the water to flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel. Altogether, he hath not dealt with any nations, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. Amen. Once again, we give God all the, all the praise and all the honor for the great things that he's done. Uh, just want to do a couple things before we get into the message today. Our speaker of this morning is uh, Minister Jarrell Bass, Jarrell A. Bass. Amen. And uh, we're excited to have him to come again this morning to deliver a powerful message of, of hope uh, and salvation for God's people. On December the 31st of 2020, uh, Minister Darrell Bass preached his initial sermon here, Servants for Christ Baptist Church. If you want to see that message, you can go to our YouTube page, that is Servants for Christ Baptist Church on YouTube, and look up the date, December 31st, Minister Darrell A. Bass on New Year's Eve. Uh, today, we are going to present him with his license to preach during due to the pandemic and my personal preferences 
and delays that were caused by me. Uh, we uh, wanted to give him his, his uh, license in the presence of some of his family members, his grandmother, his mother, and other family members that are present. So I'm going to ask the minister, uh, Jarrell Bass, if he would go down to the front of the church, pet out black feet, take a few pictures. Uh, as trustees to join me, Trustee Strickland, Trustee Minister Trash, join him on the floor. <laughs> Amen. And Minister Jones, if you come up. Come, come on up, uh, Trustee Trash, to the front. I mean, uh, Trustee Strickland. Amen. We'll, we'll get a picture later. Testing. On behalf of our church, and as the pastor of the church, you will gather here with the trustees and officers of our church. Deacon Damon, you, you are an officer. You can stand as well. Uh, come up here with us. So we wanted to uh, just you know, give you your license uh, to preach, which you preached a very powerful message. Do you remember your message that you preached? What, what was the title? <laughs> okay, that's good enough. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how much y'all know of Jesus, he said. The Lord is good. <laughs> the Lord is good. It was a powerful message, amen. Amen. So we're just having fun this morning, <laughs> having a great time. I want to give you, we made you two copies of your license to preach. On behalf of us officers, okay, let's stand right where you are for a second. On behalf of the officers of the church, we want to present you with your certificate of license. This reads, certificate of license, Jarrell A. Bass, this is the certified Jarrell A. Bass, who has given evidence that God has called him into the gospel ministry, was licensed to preach the gospel as he may have the opportunity and exercise his gifts in the work of the ministry. By serving for Christ Baptist Church Ministries, Church for Washington, 31st day of December 2020, signed by Minister Patricia A. Jones, Assistant Administrator, and Pastor Jerry Jones. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. And we made another copy for you. We got, we got two copies for him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. And we gave you another single copy in case you have to present this credential to some other body of water. I'll put another seal on it. And once again, I want you to shake the people's hand here. Shake his hand and congratulate him on being a minister. God bless you. Uh, grandmother and mother, we'll get some pictures after this service. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, it is indeed uh, an honor and a privilege for us to present the speaker for today, uh, Minister uh, Jarrell A. Bass, who will deliver the message of hope and courage to all of us. And I just want you to know that as he prepares to come, that as a minister, he has certain responsibilities and obligations. But first of all, he is to serve God. And then he is to serve God's people with integrity, dignity, and not do anything that will cause the body of Christ, himself, his family, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, any embarrassment. And that means that he ought to live in a righteous way 
and I'm going to count on his mother, grandmother, and other family members uh, that are present today to hold him accountable. That would be Robin Williams, uh, Easter Howard, and Kaylon Williams. We want you all to hold him accountable. When you see that he is doing something that he should not or he ought not do, bring it to his attention, yeah. in other words. Remind him that he is a minister, a servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And also, all the support that you family members can give to him as he moves forward with the ministry is going to be needed, necessary, and appreciated. And so our expectation is that you will stand him up and give him all that he needs to move forward because this is a very serious matter. We're not handling the books of accounting or automobile mechanic. We are handling the word of God with truth, purpose, and power to enrich and help God's people. And so we have to hold him accountable for what mission that God has placed him. I'm so happy and excited uh, to present my friend, a man that stands for truth, a man that stands for righteousness, a man that is well read, learned, studied, and has been through a lot of challenges, but yet he survived them. Amen. So we're very pleased to be able to perform this function as a church to bring him forth with boldness, courage, and power. Yes, I'm the pastor of the church, and God authorized me to perform this service for him. And I'm humbled by it. Amen. 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 The next voice you hear will be that of uh, our new minister at Service for Christ Baptist Church, Amen. Darrell Bass. Hear ye him. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, for being here. First, giving honor to God, who's the head of our life, to the pastor of this fine church, to everyone who is assembled today in the sanctuary and those who are listening on the airwaves. Amen. The first Sunday of this month, our pastor started off preaching, um, honoring our mothers and fathers as we were entering into our Mother's Day Sunday the following week. And in his absence, that was the kickoff. And we kept going into the second Sunday, which was Mother's Day. And we heard from our very own minister, Deidre Trask. Amen. And today is the third Sunday. And I said that I would try to stay in line as they started off with Mother's Day messages, I said, well, we might as well keep it going. Amen. So today, I'm not going to say I have a Mother's Day message, but I do have a message from God. Amen. Amen. Um, those of you who have your Bibles with you and want to follow along with me, I'll be reading from the book of Genesis, the very first book, the beginning, chapter 29. And I'll be reading from the English, the New International Version. And when you have it, please stand with me. I'll be starting at the verse, 16th verse. Genesis 29, 16. And when you have it, you'll find these words. And it says, And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And if you flip with me down to verse 31, it says, And the Lord saw that Leah was hated. He opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction, 
Now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again. And bare a son and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again. And bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have bore him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah, and left bearing. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you have allowed me to stand behind your sacred desk. Now, Father, I pray that you decrease Jarrell and the Holy Spirit take control. Send down your anointing that makes preaching easy, and stronghold will be torn down. Now, preach in this house today, Father, and let your presence be known. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You may be seated. The story of Rachel and Leah reminds me, Pastor Deb Jones, an episode that I myself, and maybe some of you also, may be familiar with, Tester. It reminds me of an episode of Jerry Springer, Maury Povich, and some of, you, some of you older ones, Desperate Housewives. Phil Donahue. I'm amazed at the women that come to these types of shows. Pastor, you turn me down, you turn me down. And do not have a problem embarrassing themselves by cussing and fussing, pulling out weaves and wigs, acting like they have no sort of home training, if you will. These women are fussing and fighting over men that can really care less about their well-being. Oftentimes, we have to realize these women are desperate, in a desperate state themselves. That's right. People frown sometimes at these types of shows because they think that they are staged and that they can't be true. But I stopped by today to tell you that the stories like this didn't just occur overnight. Uh -huh. Reality shows began in the Bible. If you will read with me closely as I read this passage of scripture, you will see that this story is about a brother by the name of Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. And this can easily be compared to an episode of one of these soap operas. It is a story filled with lies, cheating, sex, and trickery. Amen? Amen. We have to understand that the so-called leading man in this story is a man by the name of Jacob. He was considered, if you will, to be a mama's boy. He was known for being one who was scheming all the time and always cheating his way through life. Trickery wasn't anything new for Jacob, Sister Amin, because it was already in his DNA. He and his mother, Rebecca, if you remember, schemed against his older twin brother, Esau, tricking Isaac into believing that he was getting the blessing of Esau. Yeah. Our text begins with Jacob. He's fleeing to his uncle's house, Laban, and in the attempt to escape from his brother's anger, in addition to finding shelter at his uncle's house, the Bible tells us that Jacob found his true love by the name of Sister Rachel. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to understand that the text reveals that Jacob had worked seven years to get Rachel's hands in marriage. Mm -hmm. How many of you know that anything worth keeping is worth working for? Mm -hmm. The story goes on to tell us that after the wedding ceremony, had taken place. Jacob had woke up the next morning 
to find that he was not laying next to his wife, Rachel, but he was laying next to Sister Leah. Oh. That leads me to my first point. You will reap what you sow. The irony of this story is that Jacob met his match in labor. When he got a dose of his own medicine, and brother, do I tell you, he did not like it. Notice that Jacob's punishment fits his earlier crime. He got a chance to see how his father Isaac must have felt when he got tricked into thinking he was getting the blessing of Esau. Yeah. It's unfortunate, my brothers and sisters, that even now we have the opportunity, or we are operating, rather, with people who have the same mentality as Jacob. Yeah. Some folks will lie to you. They will lie on you. Yeah, that's right. They will lie about you. Just to get what they want. Are y'all praying with me? This morning you need to understand that there are people right in the body of Christ that have cheated. That have stolen. They have conned their way through life trying to get some titles, some power, and some position. There's an old saying that says if it doesn't start out right, it's always going to end up wrong. God wants us to conduct ourselves with honesty and integrity. Yes, sir. And he wants us to always know that reaping is always around the corner. Yeah. But if you are someone that loves confusion and you're always whispering and gossiping, I want you to know that you're not anything but a busybody trying to sow discord in the body of Christ. Right. It's called law of reciprocity. Yeah, yeah. Proverbs chapter 11, 21 says, be sure of this. Uh -huh. The wicked will not go unpunished. That's right. yeah. When Jacob found out that he had been tricked, he was outraged. And Laban told him that if he wanted to marry Rachel, he had to work for him seven more years no, oh, Lord, just to get her hand in marriage. That's right. That brings me to my next oh, point. Lord, not only does the text tell you about reaping what it's so, but it also tells us that problems will occur when we don't do it God's plan. Tell somebody you got to do it God's way. Although Jacob had been tricked by his uncle, he still should not have married two women, let alone two sisters. Contrary to how customs are doing justifying their wrong, Matthew 19, 4 through 6 declares God created marriage to be a lifelong commitment and a relationship between one man and one woman. Uh -huh. Some would say if God didn't like what Leah, Rachel, Leah had done, yeah. why did he do something to buy her? Well, my brothers and sisters, just because God tolerates sin doesn't mean that he approves of it. Right. Nor does it mean that we will get through or pass by doing the things that we have done. Yeah. The lesson that we need to take from Jacob's experience is whether we don't, when we don't follow God's plans, trouble will follow. Yeah. Jacob was so in love with Rachel that he wasn't thinking about following God's plan for marriage. Yeah. If truth be told, a whole lot of folks of us have decided that we're not even going to follow God's plans either. That's right. Society has painted a pretty picture that even some folk in the church think that it's okay that we get up and we shack up. But there's nowhere in the Bible that God has ordained shacking. I know I'm not going to get any amen, but I brought my own today. Some women have got to the point that they have been saved, but they don't want to do what it takes to live holy. Holy living, it means that you're not come to compromise with boo-boo and poo-poo and allow them to come over and stay at your house when it is that they want to just because they pay your mortgage or your card note. I want you to know that if you wake up every morning because of God and he puts the breath in your body, you too also can pay your own living. But you have to be able to learn how to pay your own way through. Amen. Can I get a witness Amen. today? Amen. We have to go and learn how to live by some godly standards. That's right. Yeah. And stop coming to church and don't have church in us. Amen. No church. There are some, so many, 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 many married and single sisters that are going through today and suffering from mental, physical, and emotional abuse. That's right. Just because they simply did not listen to God. Amen. 
Whenever you don't follow God's plan that he has laid out for you, I stop by just to tell you that you're going to endure some problems. Come on now. In addition to enduring some problems, the text reveals that a uh, picture of pain and rejection. Mm -hmm. In the early verses of the text, Leah's eyes were described as being weak, which means she's considered to be unattractive. Mm -hmm. Whereas the verses goes on and describes Rachel to be a beautiful and have a good figure. Mm -hmm. The Bible warns us that men looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart of man. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 31, 30 says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord yeah. shall be praised. Oh, but unfortunately, Leah didn't get that memo regarding that scripture. Uh, yeah. But I stopped by my sisters this morning. You don't need anybody to tell you that you look good. You don't need anybody to tell you that you're beautiful. You're wonderful. And when you wake up every morning, you ought to say to yourself in the mirror that you are fearfully made. How many of you know today that you don't need anybody to tell you that you love God? When you love God, when you woke up this morning and you put your foot down onto the floor, all you had to do was look at God and say, look at this beautiful thing that you created. Enough beautifulness that allows me to praise your name, lift up your name, and give you all the glory and praise. I just want you to know that I don't have to be able to preach and pray and praise God in a 2, 12, or 32. I'm glad that I'm able to praise him in a 2, 26, and a 42. Is there anybody in the house today that knows that they have a real love in Christ? Leah found herself married to a man that did not love her. And remedy of the situation was to continue having baby after baby. But can I put a quarter in your meter right now? Can I tell you a little secret? It don't matter how many babies you have. It don't matter how big inches of your stilettos you wear. It don't matter the fancy cars that you have. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't want you, he don't want you. He don't want you. Come on now. You can have anything that God wants you to have right. if you just put your faith in him. Yeah. And we got to understand that there's a whole lot of sisters in this woman's predicament. Uh -huh. yeah. That they're married or they're chasing after someone that doesn't want you. Come on now. But how many of you know that we have to know that we can experience love? Yes, can. We can experience yes, can. real love. Yes. Women must understand your value. Yes. It is not determined by your spouse or the money that you make yes. or by boo-boo and poo. Okay. You have to understand that your designer shoes don't do nothing for you yes. and the pretty purses that you carry has no value. Well. But unless I hold you too long, you were determined back on Calvary, your value. Well, Calvary, the text reveals that you will reap what you sow. Yeah. We will encounter problems when we don't follow God's plan. Mm -hmm. It also tells us about the picture of pain and rejection. Yeah. But lastly, Minister Trash, it tells us about deliverance and victory. I stopped by to tell you that, look at the text. No matter what Leah did, she couldn't make Jacob love her. No, she couldn't. And the reason why she couldn't, and the reason why she continued to fail at what she was doing was because she was chasing after the wrong man. Yeah. Well. She was so busy trying to love somebody that didn't love her that she forgot about her first love. Yeah. She was looking for Jacob to fill a void in her life and when she finally remembered that can't nobody do me like Jesus can. Can't nobody love her like Jesus can. When Leah fell in love with Jesus, she was delivered from what folks thought about her. When she was fell in love with Jesus, she was delivered from low self-esteem. When she was delivered and after falling in love with Jesus, she was delivered from feeling like she was just a baby-making machine. And I don't know about you today, but I think I got maybe two people in here today who don't mind giving God the praise because God has got you through some mess. 
I just want you to understand that going through this, you will endure some pains. You will endure some trials and tribulations. You will endure some disappointments. You will endure some valleys. But is there anybody in here who knows that if you keep holding on to God's unchanging hand, everything will be all right? When I think back on Calvary and I think about God's best gift to us, I tell him that's the best gift that you can ever give. I don't need anybody to buy me Mother's Day gifts or Father's Day gifts. I don't need anybody to go bankrupt trying to spend their last dime on me. God kept me this far by faith. I just want somebody to know that. How many of you know that you can believe in Jesus Christ and that the Lord is good and that he shares his love? Can't nobody love you like Jesus can. I'm looking for a few folks who believe that God is real and that they have the real love in their life. The love of God will heal you. The love of God will keep you. The love of God will preserve you. But I'm so glad it was him when he walked the dusty streets of Dosa Calamosa. It was him who carried our burdens on his shoulder. It was him who walked the dusty streets. It was him who was hung high. It was him who was pierced in his side. But oh, aren't you so glad that he came down for us? He was rolled in a rich man's new tomb. But I let you know today that he didn't stay there. He got up early on a Sunday morning with all power. That's what we call real love. Is there anybody here this morning who knows what kind of love they're dealing with? Is there anybody here who knows that they have real love in their house? I don't want anybody to fall in the predicament like Rachel and Leah. But all if you put your hands in God's hand, I promise you, you'll find perfect place. Yeah, 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 yeah. with purpose and yeah. with power. Yeah. So we thank God that there's purpose and power in the message that God has given to yeah. us today. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. thing that I've learned in the short time that I've lived is people don't like it when it happens to them. Mm. They don't mind going around and treating people in a dismissive uh, manner in a way that's deceptive, but when it happens to you, yeah. on, that's when you start to say the fat calf has squealed and they have done me an injustice. Amen, somebody. But well, we know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He stood the test of time. He stood what is stated in uh, 1 John 2 16 when He was challenged with lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Amen, somebody. And when you read the account of why he had, why Jacob had to do double duty, it's because of the deception that he did yeah. and how he lived his own life. Amen, somebody. Y'all yeah. heard the word. Y'all heard the word of God today. And when the preacher was preaching, I said, step on it. Step on the gas and speed it up. Speed it up some more. Speed it up. So people will know the truth and the righteousness about God's yeah. holy word. Right. God is indeed good. He's powerful. Yeah. And so we acclaim our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For he is the one, as you heard in the message that he died shed his blood that you and I could have the right to eternal life. There's a, there's a cost with that. Jesus expects for us to be good Christians and to do the right things inside of our lives. Amen, somebody? Amen. 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 So you, you've heard the word of God today yeah. from yeah. Minister uh, Jarrell A. Bass. Powerful, powerful message. Did it yeah. sink down inside of your heart and make you move yeah. inside of your spirit, cause your soul to vibrate and say, what must I do yeah. to be saved? Yeah. Amen. So we're going to close it out now and move into the remainder of our service. And we just want to invite those of you who have heard the word of God today. Yeah. Those of you that are watching on DCTV or, or Prince George's County Television or Facebook Live or, or uh, 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 on Zoom or wherever you're watching this broadcast, if you're sitting down, it's time to get up and do something. And get up, stand up, speak up, and accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. My mother died on January the 16th. She passed into glory. Into a new life. She died from this life and moved into a new life. Yeah. But she used to tell us all the time, playtime is over. Is over. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I didn't understand it. I thought it was time to come inside the house when she said playtime is over. Mm -hmm. But then I come to realize it was more than just coming inside the house. It's coming inside the house with victory in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ yeah. in your heart and in yeah. your mind. Yeah. So we thank God for mm -hmm. Minister uh, Joelle Bass. She did a magnificent yeah. job yeah. in the hearing yesterday. Magnificent. Absolutely. And we're looking forward to uh, hearing yeah. more from Minister yeah. uh, Jarrell Bass yeah. as he continues to grow and develop in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He, he is paving the way for a new generation of preachers. Amen, somebody. Y'all yeah. didn't hear me. I say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. So I'm thankful to God for all that he has done. Amen. So no matter where you're watching us, on whatever media platform you are watching us, you can also go to our Facebook page. You can go to our a website which is servants for Christ inc.org servants for Christ inc.org if you want to join our church if you want to join in with us if you want to support us then you can go to servants for Christ inc.org now perhaps there's someone out there today that heard the word of God you heard the word of God and, and how your life can change when you accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as as Jesus was carrying his cross, as you heard, through the streets of Jerusalem, and he was on his way to the cross, he was, he was about to uh, die for you and I so that you and I could have this right to eternal life. If you're willing to accept the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wherever you are, you can stand to your feet. If you want to be rededicated to the body of Christ, you can stand to your feet. You can lay down. You can pray. You can say, Lord Jesus, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want to accept your saving grace. I want to accept and receive the salvation that you have given to me. I want to receive you, Lord, as my God. If you said those words and you believe in your heart and, and in your mind, then you have been saved. Amen. Jesus Christ is, is with you right now. Yes, Ephesians 4.30 teaches us one solid thing, that we shall not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed yes. until the day of redemption. And so we give God all the praise and all the honor for the things that Amen. he has done. Amen. My brother, so, so we're going to let you go now for those of you that are at home. But we're going to see, we're going to receive our, our offering, our tithe and our offering into the church. And so we thank God for uh, the tithe and the offering that comes into our sanctuary, into our church, into our treasury. Of course, we know that all churches need funds to operate. And many people have gone AWOL, absent without any lead, on their tithe and their offering. They haven't given the church a dime. And I say, shame on you. Shame on you. Some of you can give and refuse to give. Well, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and your peace. Thank you for your patience. And even now, if you're coming for your presence with exceeding joy, we give you all the honor. Bless the tithe that come into the church, into your storehouse where you have said that there may be meat in your house. But even beyond that, God, if we step back a few verses, you say that you have robbed me, the whole nation, because you refuse to bring your tithe and your offering. Well, you reap what you sow, as you heard in the sermon today. Yeah, yeah. So sow and reap, and you're going to reap what you sow. So we thank God. Now, Lord, we're going to receive our tithe and our offering into the sanctuary of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're going to collect that after Minister Jarrell Bass comes back and give us a final concluding thoughts, and he's going to give us the benediction as well, in Jesus' name. I just want to say one more time that you did a magnificent, outstanding job yeah, in presenting that message today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Praise God for what he did and how he has blessed our spirit and soul, and we look forward to hearing from him to our visitors today, it's not too late to say welcome. Welcome to Service for Christ as Jarrell Bass, Minister Jarrell Bass, now come and close us out in his own way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. Before we leave, I just want to make acknowledgement that uh, it's been six years past has been asking to meet my mama. So without further ado, Pastor, 
That's my mom for waving her hand. Mama, this is Pastor Jones. <laughs> Thank you for that <clears throat> behind, uh, as, as preachers give their closing, I just say that I brought with her, not only that I had my phenomenal mother, but I brought my virtuous grandmother with me. Right. And together they are phenomenally. Amen. So I thank both of them for tuning in. Tell us your names. So my mother's so Trusty Robin Williams, and my grandmother is Deaconess Easter Howard. Uh, and also they have with them my nephew, my godson, his name is Caleb Williams. And they are from Greater People Junior Baptist Church. Um, and I don't want to exclude anyone, but as I was tuned into the live, I also saw my siblings. So my siblings are tuned into the live, so thank you guys for tuning in, listening in, and much love to you as well. Tell them you want to come over here and visit us. <laughs> the pastor said, come on over and visit us. Actually, everybody on live, we are open in the sanctuary, so come on through and visit us. Amen. Amen. Immediately. Amen. <laughs> pastor said, immediately. <laughs> um, but I do want to thank everyone um, who has encouraged me and motivated me and continue to have my best interests at heart. Amen. Amen. With all hearts and minds are clear, is there anything else before we close? If not, let us stand. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence and his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, majesty, dominion, power, and all, henceforth and forever, let all the God's people say, Amen. 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 Amen.